Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Di- the Dog Days of Podcasting Edition for August uh, 14th, 2019. Almost halfway through. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. This season we are covering amateur or if you prefer to call it ham radio. Honestly, they're both kind of ir- uh, switch switchable, whatever the right term is. Anyway, um, so I'm going to give you a heads up on this one. This is going to be a longer one. Uh, reason being, we are talking today, talking about making contacts. And I want to put some real life examples in here and, because I these are some questions I asked. And it's, you know, ultimately gets you more comfortable communicating with other people out there. First thing I want to point out is uh, when you're on UHF, VHF repeaters, it kind of is different than if you're on like HF. On HF, to initiate a call, you use the letter CQ. Um, Charlie Quebec. Um I think phonics are in here too. Um, anyway, uh, so seek you, CQ, kind of like the uh, instant messenger at the time, ICQ. Generally, you don't call CQ on VHF, UHF, especially on repeaters. But, um, but talking about repeaters, let's talk about how you actually do make contacts. And some of this is universal. So first you start listening to see if someone's talking. It should be good sense, but just in case. You listen for activity. You um, usually make your transmission kind of pretty short. You identify who you are, and then you pause between transmissions. So it's not quite as clear as what it should be. That is what the book said. So really what happens in most cases is um, if you, in a normal conversation, you put out your call sign, maybe you're calling for someone, I'll talk about that in just one second, or you're just saying, hey, I'm out here. Uh, When I first got my license, the very first thing I did was, and my call sign at the time was KE0VYC. So I said, KE0VYC, brand new ham here. And I had like three contacts just on the route home. So that's a pretty easy one. But then you don't have to keep giving your call sign every single time you're done talking. Um, really what you're doing is you put your call sign more of a courtesy than a, quote, rule. Um, and it's also so they know who you're talking, who they're talking to. Um, and then the, um, and then every 10 minutes you put out your call sign that is the maximum that they talk about. And then at the end of your transmissions. So it might sound something like um, WX0MIK. And someone responds back. Say, hey, how's it going today? They'll respond back. Hey, yeah, you know, everything's going good. Weather is great. And then, you know, you start conversation back and forth. And then you look and say, oh, it's been a few minutes. Maybe I should give my call sign. So then you give your call sign. And then you jump right back in the conversation. And at the very end, you say, okay, well, thank you. Uh, thanks for talking to me. This is WX0MIK. And then you're done. Um, that is basic conversation. Um, obviously not a very realistic one, but, you know, whatever. Um, if you're just looking to make a contact, but you don't have anyone in particular in mind, you... Um, you actually just put out your your call sign and then say monitoring. So 
I've heard a lot more people recently give, uh, say something like WX0 MIK monitoring mobile or WX0 MIK mobile. Basically, some sort of indication that, hey, um, if, if you're free, you want to talk, awesome. And uh, I've, I'm thinking they're saying mobile because, hey, I'm driving somewhere and I don't, I'm not going to be able to talk forever just until I get my destination. But now if you're trying to contact someone specifically, now you use more of a call like this. KC0, Q&A, this is WX0, MIK. Don't even have to include that this is, but that's usually what I do. And then if they respond, then you continue on with your conversation. They may come back with WX0, MIK, this is KE0, Q&A, and then we start talking. Um, so it's just kind of a courtesy, kind of a, th a thing. Um, the hardest part for me is catching everyone's c it's call signs. Because uh, sometimes they say it so fast you can barely catch it. WX0, MIK. Um, what did you say? So it's also courtesy that you can say, um, can you repeat that? Because I didn't catch it. And then sometimes they'll reply back. And is that my next line item? No, where is that? Oh, that's down there. Sometimes if people are having a hard time doing it, usually when they have me repeat, I'll come back with the, uh, I think they call it for the phonetic. Um, that's another thing that is worth learning, at least your call sign to start with. But then kind of going forward, all the letters. So I'm sure you've at least heard the phonetics before. So um, something like Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, WTF. Um, it's replacing the first, it's using a word with the first letter of the, the letter that you're looking for. So for example, my call sign, WX0MIK, it is Whiskey X-Ray Zero Mike India Kilo. Wow, I did that right away. I have problems with the mic and then I'm processing the other two because it's WX0 mic. Anyway, so you can come back with that and then they'll say, oh, okay, WX0 MIK. Hey, welcome. Hey, how's it going? It's good for, especially if you have a weaker signal, easier to understand. Or if you have a weird call sign like a C versus Z, you know, it becomes complicated, especially when you don't get full clear signal. Another thing that they talk about within there is if you accidentally interfere with someone, just quickly say sorry, end with your call sign, and move on. Most people are not complete dicks, uh, as long as you're not a complete dick. So they will just forgive you and move on with their conversation. Um, or they may welcome you in and they say, hey, do you have anything to add? You know, so it's most people are really nice. There's a few people that are, like I said, dicks, but usually few and far between. Although sometimes some clubs gather them together and then you probably don't want to be part of that group. So you'll have to check out your local clubs if and when you get to that point. Um, signal reports. That's a thing that I, I have, I struggle with sometimes, but I think it, it would be, I'm not also communicating enough to where it's always a thing, but uh, signal reports and say, hey, I got you loud and clear, or it could be something like, well, you're a little fuzzy and I'm hearing some weird artifacting or something towards the end. You know, all those little minutia of signal reports that I haven't really dived into that so much yet. I'm busy trying to focus on what people are saying yet um, and deciphering it through the FM analog type stuff. Um, in conversation, some people say over, other people don't. Uh, in my radio, mostly when someone's done, you get a beep. Um, or you'll just hear plain old static from the, um, repeater, depending on how the repeater works. It's kind of a common courtesy to say over or something. Yeah, no one's told me that you should or should not. 
Some people say over, some people don't. I don't know. It's hard to get that in your brain of every time you're done talking, you say over and wait for someone else to start talking. Although it's in CB world, I don't know. Maybe it's just something you got built in. Um, and ultimately, don't worry if you're not doing it quite right. Uh, especially if you're new and they kind of know you're new. They're usually pretty forgiving and they'll just either teach you the right way or just remind you you're doing it wrong. Or, you know, just ask questions. Uh, you know, if you say, hey, I'm looking for a radio. What what do you recommend? In fact, I kind of had that conversation tonight with KC Zero Q&A. And he gave me a couple different models. He said, you know, if you have a little bit of money, this is a good one to get. If you have a lot of money, this is a better one to get. So, uh, you know, at least helpful based on his experiences. Of course, you know, you talk to the next guy and they have a whole different brand, whole different model. But, (laughs) you know, it's kind of like asking a Mac guy, what's the best computer? Well, it's probably an Apple Mac. If you ask a Linux guy what the best computer is, it's probably going to be some sort of Linux-based thing. You know, so you just got to kind of pick, navigate your own from there. Or if it's this guy that you really trust, well then, or lady, uh, then just kind of follow their lead. Especially if they can he- teach you more about how to use, use the radio after that. Um, the next thing they talk about outside repeaters is in simplex channels. They have allocated in the band plans like we talked about today or yesterday, uh, depending on when you want to look at it, um, that there are band plans. Well, within the band plan is simplex cha- these things called simplex channels, which is really just radio to radio. There's not a repeater in there. It's just straight up radio to radio. Um and within there, even, they have dedicated simplex channels that they call national calling frequencies. I cannot tell you off the top of my head what it is, but there is one in, in two meter, one in uh, 70 centimeter. And supposedly, if you make, you know, make calls on that, then people will answer and then you can, you're supposed to take that conversation off to another simplex channel so you don't uh, keep that busy. I have monitored this, I have called out on this, and have never gotten a response. So I don't know if I'm just calling, you know, wrong time of the day, wrong area, I don't know. But I've never had a response. So, and also I'm just using the small radio, which might have something to do with it too, but I don't know. And, you know, if you start doing a lot more simplex, um that's a whole that's a little bit different kind of animal per se um but you know if your repeaters in your area aren't very busy uh, just hold your conversation there i know they talk about if you um if you make a contact on a repeater to move over to simplex so you don't tie it up but um if you're in an area that doesn't have very busy repeaters it probably is not too big of a deal and if it is someone will call and break break your conversation and ask you to move um i do know i was just watching a video the other day in florida uh, was it called the sara net so um i'm breaking <laughs> script here but it was really cool because what they have built is a redundant um well redundant system basically of repeaters that allowed or that do allow ham radio operators to communicate to anyone in the state through this one network of repeaters. And thus, if you start talking hurricanes or, well, mostly hurricanes probably down there, you can have uh, coverage from wherever you are to anywhere in the state to where they can start building up you know emergency needs or whatever so um if you i can link to that video here as well it was really cool because what they did was they had um uhf repeaters so they chose uhf because it will push through the rain and uh, everything a little easier 
And then uh, they used microwave as a backbone. So through microwave, amateur radio back, uh, microwave, they're do doing, they're linking all these towers together. So now they have a system that they can dire directional point to each other and then link all these things together. So if you start communicating on one repeater, you're hitting what, like 30, I think it was like 30 some repeaters throughout the entire state. So you could literally talk to anybody in the state, <clears throat> which is also a problem because you can literally talk to anyone in the state and thus you're tying up multiple repeaters. So they, you know, while you can use them, they like to keep it extremely short contacts because again, you're talking to 30 repeaters. But because they all have emergency power, they all they may be powered by solar, who knows? The towers look at least a couple of my seen look like they're pretty well built to where they probably probably withstand most hurricanes. I'm not gonna say all. And so I mean they've it's a well thought out system and even partially funded by the state. So you have a good solid network for emergency communications. And, you know, I don't know about anywhere else that they have that, but that's a great model to have if you're in an area where you can have massive catastrophe due to, like, hurricanes. I would hope most of the border states, especially the ones that hit, that hit the most, have some sort of a network like that. But I kind of digress from my script, like I said. So let's continue on. Um, the next thing to talk about is SSB, single sideband, CW, and digital contacts. These are the modes where you start calling CQ. So CQ really means I'm calling any station or seek you, like I explained before. So an example of what this might sound like on like an HF radio is something like this. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is WX0, MIK, Whiskey, X-Ray 0. Mike India Kilo calling CQ and standing by. And sometimes you'll do that multiple times because the more you obviously you want to do it forever, but the more you do it, the more likely someone's going to catch you on the radio and then answer. And especially with these newer radios where they have what they call a waterfall, you're looking at kind of a range of bands. So if you're sitting in one frequency and all of a sudden you see the stream coming in over here. You can scroll over there quick and then uh, answer the CQ. So um, that is a um, very nice way of making contacts, especially on HF. CW probably very much the same way the Morse code. Although in Morse code, you would not do the phonetic. You would just put your call sign out there. Um Another thing, and uh, I didn't realize I had it up here. Um, I'll move that down the next section here. Um, and as with any mode, any um, ham radio transmission, don't speak first. Listen. Make sure no one's talking. Give it a good 30 seconds. If no one's talking, then you can put your call out there. Um, sometimes they aren't necessarily using it this second. They're just waiting a couple minutes. Um, like tonight, Don had to go run into the um, post office for a minute. So we stopped our conversation. We, then we continued on. If someone else jumped in, it probably wouldn't have been a big deal. But it's kind of courtesy. It's kind of being courteous throughout the whole process. Um, and like I said before, to use phonetics. Uh, makes it easier to get pe for people to get it right. Uh, the book does somewhere talk about, give you the list of fanatics. You can find them easily. It's a standard system that must be transmitted in English. So it doesn't matter if you're from Spain, if you're from Russia, it must be transmitted in English. What happens after that? It can be any language. So the uh, ITU, which is their kind of a branch of the United Nations, they drive all this. And I'm not sure how they came up with English as a standard, but English is a standard. So we don't have to worry about that. 
And so it was very easy. Uh, like my previous call sign KE zero VYC was Kilo Echo zero Victor Yankee Charlie. That was actually pretty easy to call out. And that's the only thing I really liked about that. Um, but it's, once you learn it, it's pretty simple. Um, I don't have all the words memorized yet, but you know, someone all of a sudden called out, um, I don't know what one, some of those others are. If they call out one, you're like, oh, first letter, there you go. Or Lima, there we go. Lima's one. So, you know, it starts with an L. Um, the next thing they talk about is Q signals. Q signals are old radio shorthand that have become a standard. Uh, so this is the only allowed, quote, cryptic code that is acceptable within ham radio. And that is because it's been adopted worldwide. It's a very well-known standard. The book does go over a few of the popular ones. Um, I There's three that I had picked out, but then I put out a call to a ham radio group, and I got a list of few more. So I didn't put the meaning on, on all these in the show notes. But um, these are ones that they have used, probably mostly HF free type stuff, but um, just good stuff to know. So QSL is one of them, and that's acknowledging receipt. So I think that is used when you say, yep, I have confirmed your contact and vice versa. Um, Q- QTH is your location. So what's your QTH? Well, I'm in southern Minnesota. Uh, QSY. Um, it can be kind of a statement or just a question of should we change our frequency? So QSY 1144253 or something like that, whatever. Threw random numbers out. Um, so you can do something like that and then kind of say, yep, that sounds good. And then you move over that frequency. Uh, QSO was another one. QTV, QRZ, or QRZ, I should say. Uh, QRM, QRN, QRP, which is, uh, QRP, I think is, uh, low power mode or lower, lower your power and QRO. Those are a few others that people rattle off. You can kind of research those if you want. Uh, in most cases, I haven't heard that too much on the air. I see it more in the forums and chat rooms and things and Facebook groups. So usually you have a pretty good opportunity to Google it. And then once you start running into it more, then you can probably learn, memorize them, learn them, whatever it is you do to make sure you understand what they are. Um, Like, a, you know, don't, don't get too hung up on them. I don't hear them on the nets and repeaters very often. It's usually what's your location because you're talking. I mean, it's <laughs> what, what's easier. What's your QTH or what's your location? Well, they're both just as much work to say. Uh, two other ones that aren't, quote, Q signals, but are extremely common is 73, which you've heard me say for, well, 13 days now. Uh, that means best regards. So it's kind of a goodbye, best regards, kind of good luck, whatever. But it's it's best regards is ultimately what it's understood to be. That is extremely prevalent. Uh, another one I have seen on the forums, and it took me, uh, I had to look it up, but DE. So that is um, shorthand for from on uh, C, or on, uh, on uh, CW or Morse code. So really your Morse code for your um, calling out CQ is really CQ, 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 DE, WX0, MIK. And then you repeat that again. So that is where DE came from. That's where most of this came from is because of Morse code and people were too lazy to spell that all out. Or is just were smart and came up with the universal language that they didn't have to spell it all out. Either way, um, they're widely used today and all acceptable. So usually when I sign off, I say WX zero M I K seventy three. Um, another thing they talk about in here, I'm not going to cover these as much, but there's a something they call DXing and contexting, contesting. If I can sp- speak right, 
A DX is distance station. In fact, I just remembered what that was after I looked it up. Um, usually these are thousands of miles. So, you know, you're like DXing um, Europe or DXing Asia or India or um, Antarctica. Um, and then usually for VHF, UHF, it's any, anything beyond the radio horizon. I'm not quite sure what that quote means. Um, if it's 50 miles, if it's a hundred miles or what, but it's just another, um, form of that. Contests are just like what they are, what you might think they are. In most cases, from what I've seen, it's based on getting the most number of contacts. There probably is some out there where you get the furthest distance out. And thus, if you can do the the long path um, or bouncing the signal across the world and talk to someone through the long route. So, you know, there, you have the short route where it's direct to them. You turn your, your antenna 90 degrees the other way, you're trying to the long route around and talking to them. So there's things like that, too. Um but contests, a lot of people are contests, there's logging involved and so on. You can, they'll teach you, they'll talk a little more about that. Ultimately, they both claim to strive that they improve the operator's radio skills because you're trying to pull out all these little signals or all these, um, all these different areas. And so you're, you're really kind of working the system, building antennas to make it work better and so on. So it is improving the radio skills, but a lot of these people are almost like seem like they're professional con, con, um, professional at contests. There's like lots of them, and thus is competition. And many people love competition. Uh, the book also talks about video and things like that. I didn't think that was quite so much in the world of quote making contacts, but I I want to include it in here. You can, you can read about that in there. In fact, I don't even know there was a actual question related to it oh yeah there is what type of transmission is indicated by the term ntsc and the book does cover that um i also talked about slow scan tv which i kind of sort of mentioned in previous episodes and so on so tomorrow we are going to be talking more about repeaters and how to contact them how to program your radio so you can use them so we're we're starting to dig in. We're starting to kind of cover all the things, and you know, when, when you it it it's kind of like how I like to work, where I like to kind of look at the big picture, and then here's all the different components, and then like here's how to, how to put it all together. I enjoy that type of methodology because it now allows you to kind of see, okay, this is what the big picture is, and now we can dive into the small details and don't worry you're not going to remember all this if and when you do get your license you have a question you can contact me on facebook you can find me at uh, mike wills all one word you can also contact me on twitter uh, and again mike wills um you can contact me what my website at uh or through my website at mikewills.me you can email me, mike at mikewills.me. Did you like that transition? That was awesome. Uh, so until tomorrow, I really like the, I really appreciate that you are listening and I am loving all the other dog days of podcasts that are out there. Um, there's a little bunch, a whole bunch of great ones out there. So if you are listening to dog days of podcast uh, list, awesome. If you're not, go check it out at uh, dogdaysofpodcasting.com. And you can check them all out. So until tomorrow, 73 from WX0MIK. The frequency is now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0MIK. 73.